Hello and welcome to another Timeless Gameplay video. One of my supporters on Patreon requested that I try Colossus Hammer in the Timeless format to see if it would be viable, and after some trial and error, this is the deck I ended up with, a white, red and green or Naya colored Colossus Hammer combo deck, and this is our centerpiece. The one mana equipment gives plus 10 plus 10 and makes the equipped creature lose flying, but normally costs 8 mana to equip, so there's a few ways to discount that equip cost down to 0 mana sometimes, thanks to Sigarda's aid an enchantment that lets us play equipment at instant speed, and if we play them we can attach them to one of our creatures right away. Then we also have a Resolute Strike, an instant giving a creature plus two plus two. If it's a warrior, we can attach an equipment we control to it for free. And finally, Kemba's Outfitter can perpetually change the equip cost to just one mana, so we can also easily move our equipment around. So we've got 12 of these cost reducers, and then besides four copies of Colossus Hammer, for added consistency, we also have three copies of Belt of Giant Strength, which can turn our creature's base power and toughness to a 10-10, which is also quite powerful. And then we've got three copies of Fighter Class, which will usually find our Colossus Hammer, or in some circumstances, if we already have a Colossus Hammer equipped, we want to get Shadow Spear to give that creature plus one plus one, Trample and a Lifelink, which is important to get past any random chum blockers, like maybe an Orcish Bowmaster or its army token, so that we can actually start connecting with the opponent, and the life gain is also very valuable against the burn deck. So these are our equipment, and then of course we need some creatures to equip, and ideally they're also warriors, so Resolute Strike can equip them for free. So Outfitter itself not a warrior, but we've got 12 warriors as remaining creatures here, and one of them is Cacophony Scamp, a 1-1, that when it deals damage to the opponent we can sacrifice it if we do proliferate. The proliferate doesn't matter, but being able to sacrifice it is actually relevant, because when it dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So a Scamp can potentially set up a turn 2 kill in this deck, if we play Scamp on turn 1, and then at turn 2 either go Sigardos 8 plus Colossus Hammer, or maybe Colossus Hammer into Resolute Strike, and then attack, hit the opponent, and then after dealing 10 plus damage we can sacrifice the Scamp and deal another 10 more to close out the game. So that's how we can potentially win on turn 2. We also have Fireblade Charger, which is pretty similar. It cannot sacrifice itself like the Scamp, but it does gain haste when equipped, which can potentially set up kind of a surprise attack out of nowhere. And then when it dies, it still deals damage equal to its power to any target. So once we get an attack in for 10 damage, then if the opponent tries to take out Charger with, let's say, a Fatal Push, then we still get to deal 10 damage on the way out. And then finally, Wild Nakadal is one of the reasons to splash a bit of green, besides of course our Belt of Giant Strength. And this is not a creature that's particularly synergistic with our equipment, but it is often just a 1 mana 3-3, since we have plenty of fetch lands and shock lands to enable the extra plus 1 plus 1. And then it's also Warrior, and as a 3-3 it's actually going to survive something like an Orcish Bowmasters, so then it's a bit safer to move in on the Wild Nakadal with our various equipment. And then rounding out the deck, we've got four copies of Thud, which is especially nice alongside Cacophony Scamp and Fireblade Charger once we put an equipment on them, as we now get to deal 10 plus damage with Thud and another 10 plus damage from Scamp or Charger dying. So that's another way to break a board stall if we don't have Shadow Spear available. And so far, all the cards we've covered are legal in Historic, so you don't necessarily have to play this in Timeless, but Veil of Summer is banned in Historic and can be a nice way to stop an opposing discard spell from taking one of our key combos pieces while we also get to draw a card and it can also stop a black removal spell like Fatal Push or of course Orcish Bowmasters which has quite a few one toughness creatures it could take out at instant speed. And then besides Veil of Summer, we also have the 8 fetch lands, which are not legal and historic, and these are important to fix our colors and to enable Wild Nakadal by getting the appropriate shock lands, and especially Sacred Foundry is an important one, since by itself it enables Wild Nakadal, assuming we have green mana to cast Nakadal in the first place. And then we've got Stomping Ground and Temple Garden, and then we also have a basic planes to help play around Blood Moon, and then it can also save us a bit of damage when fetching with our Windswept Heath. We could potentially, for go wooded foothills and just play more white fetches so we can more consistently get access to planes but at least these fetches can get all three of our shock lands so that's the upside and then we've got a few fast lands as well to round things out and then one sunbaked canyon as a bit of flood insurance can also be nice to have and then of course our companion Lurus is one card we cannot cast when Blood Moon is out, even with our basic planes in play, but it does give us a bit of late game in those grindier matchups, can even get back our various equipment if our opponent had a discard spell, so that can also be pretty important. And of course also a lifelink creature in those racing situations against a burn deck, so just equipping a Lurus with a hammer or a belt can also be game over. 
So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has a lot of potential. Outfitter discounts belts, and then we even have a thud to sack either Charger or Scam for a clean 20 damage. So we want to get a red-white here, probably. And hope they don't have a discard spell for belt next turn. If they do, we still have Lurus to eventually get it back, and then it will still have that discount opponent on a burn deck, it seems. Sigarda's Aid is interesting. So now I'm kind of liking Sigarda's Aid and play a one drop. I will need green mana eventually, so I'm probably gonna have to take another three here to get a green dual land. So I can double spell right now and still play belt next turn. So let's go for it. And between Charger and Scamp, I guess Charger can gain haste, so that's maybe more relevant later. Don't think the attack for two really matters. A Wrecked Raid, Trigger Prowess. That's fine. And a Kumano. I'm fine jumping here since we've got more creatures coming up. But this should be lethal. Especially now with Thud. But just attacking here would be enough. Attack for 10, sacrifice, scam to its own ability. And that's another 10. But let's say the opponent gains some more life. Then uh, Thud would be another 10 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is a little clunky. We have Fighter Class, which is pretty expensive to get our hammer. And on only one land, we're not guaranteed to get there. Also only one creature, so if that gets taken out, we uh, don't really make any progress. Okay, this um, isn't perfect, but I'm willing to give it a shot. So we definitely want two lands, at least. Outfitter, Fighter Class. Fighter Class can get Hammer. And then Hammer plus Shadow Spear could be enough, so we may not need Thud. So I could just keep three lands, which gives us kind of a more consistent turn three, where we can play multiple things out. Or I could get rid of a land and keep Thud. We'll try it this way. Also gives us more mana to potentially put Lurus into action here. Alright, so Death Rite. We're just gonna play Shadow Spear here. Don't need to play a fetch land just yet. And then turn to Fighter Class, get Hammer. Opponent's got the fetch land, so now I'm potentially okay running out my own. Otherwise we could just take one off Canyon. Opponent's gonna pass, it seems. Attack for one. All right, Copper Line Gorge doesn't quite help with Fighter Class. So, potentially worried about Blood Moon. Bone's not running any Companion, so it makes it a little bit more likely. So I could just fetch a Plains here, if we want to be safe. And then Fighter Class, get Hammer. And then next turn we can play Copper Line Gorge. Play Outfitter, Hammer, and Equip for one. And hope to dodge a discard spell. This is probably a matchup where we don't mind drawing Veil of Summer to kind of protect it. Okay, Belt gives us another equipment. Although that's probably not going to be the limiting factor here. It's probably going to be number of creatures we have. Either way, we'll uh, go for it here. And 
and then we could see something like a Bowmaster's takeout or creature in response. Or a fatal push. Alright. Could have been worse. Now if our opponent's got something like a uh, Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes, they can close out the game pretty quickly. So it's important that we find another creature to equip. Alurus can eventually get Outfitter back, but that's going to take two turns. For now, Bobble. And a Blood Moon, alright. Good thing we've got a Plains, but uh, we won't be able to play Alurus with Blood Moon out. And also won't be able to play the Belt. Did have Forest in the mana base for a while, but uh, ended up cutting it since I didn't end up fetching for it very often, and it's kind of clunky to get when you want to cast a red-white spell on turn two. Okay, so can play Sigardos Aid for what it's worth. And then, yeah, it's just waiting for a creature. Although once we find a creature, we can immediately suit it up. I guess we could also consider leveling up our uh, fighter class here instead of putting Alurus in hand when we know we wouldn't be able to cast it. Tormogoy for 3 4. And Deathrite, of course, also good at fighting Alurus by exiling our creatures. Although they currently didn't have uh, green mana available. And the Dark Age Scion is next. There's a Fireblade Charger, excellent top deck. Bones tapped out, so the coast is clear. Equip Hammer. And equip Shadow Spear. And hit you for 12. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing a big equipment. We just have Shadow Spear. So we're drawing towards four hammers, three. Fighter classes and uh, three belts, so that's ten outs. Yeah, I mean, that's not terrible odds. In the meantime, we get to deploy double Wild Nacoddle. Yeah, I guess we'll give it a shot. And then we already have Shadow Spear, so we don't need to worry about evasion or drawing a thud. So we'll end up getting Sacred Foundry, but for now we want a green source. So green-white will do. Alright, Sunken Citadel in black. Can be nice alongside Nykthos and kind of a black devotion strategy. For now, play another Wild Nacoddle, play Charger. Want to wait on Outfitter until we potentially top deck one of those aforementioned equipment. So if we top deck Hammer, we can play it and equip it for one mana. That's no Hammer. Alright, I guess we'll go for Shadow Spear then. And try and get there the old-fashioned way. But not likely as a Bowmasters, they can flash in can uh, equip Fireblade Charger with Shadow Spear. If they kill it, then at least we get to deal one damage on the way out. Eh, opponent's going to play Bowmasters now on the Outfitter. And attack. And double block. Means we get to deal two on the way out. Bones at nine. But uh, this is where things can get scary. Especially if Dark Ritual is involved. Ashiok, alright, that's gonna shut down my wooded foothills until we take it out. And a Cacophony Scamp. So we could ignore Ashiok and just hit four. Seven. That seems reasonable, just put them low. And 
and then I can equip Scamp with Shadow Spear so that if they have some sort of board wipe, they still take damage on the way out. Now this is a one ring, they can buy themselves some time. And our opponent explodes. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper, I think. Outfitter to go with Hammer, and then we've got a Thud as our finisher, as well as Shadow Spear. So we've got multiple ways to break through a board stall. Opponent without a Companion, so tends to be more of a big mana deck. And a Once Upon a Time could point towards Titan Ramp as we see Field of the Dead. So this should be a pretty decent matchup. The main card I'm worried about is Boseju destroying my equipment. But if they make a few zombie tokens, we can just Thud or Shadow Spear to still win the game. But of course, if they play an early Titan, we could still be in a bit of trouble. So Sigardos Aid is an interesting draw. I could now go for Wild Nacatl on turn 1. I guess I won't be able to make it a 3-3 since we have Canyon and I need to get green to cast a Wild Nacatl. So we could also just play Outfitter, I suppose, and then get a green-white. And then next turn I can play Hammer Equip or Sigardos Aid play Hammer. And then next turn, Shadow Spear for one mana plus Thud. Alright, let's see how this goes. Opponent with a Fable on three. Camp could have been nice, but um, yeah, I guess we'll go for Sigarda's Aid and Hammer versus we could also go Scamp plus play Sigarda's Aid, for instance, and then next turn just set up lethal with a Scamp. Although if I force them to jump with a Shaman, that's pretty good. If they take it, then next turn Thud is lethal or we get there with Shadow Spear. So this still seems fine to me. Could have also let the trade happen, just play Scamp. But on the off chance that our opponent has a few burn spells, this might be the better way to go. And then between Shadow Spear giving Trample and Thud and dealing another 12 or 13, we should be okay. Alright, once upon a time, I guess our opponent could still find a Buseju to blow up Colossus Hammer if they've got a green source. Finds Blast Zone. Wow, Blast Zone actually would have been pretty backbreaking had they just played that and activated. But yeah, looks like we're in the clear. So just attack, Shadow Spear and Thud. Make sure the auto tapper doesn't mess us up. But yeah, Blast Zone would have been pretty scary. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This a one lander without any equipment is going to be a mulligan. This one is missing a way to equip our Belt of Giant Strength on the cheap. So we're hoping to draw Sigardos Aid. Razud Strike or Outfitter. So we have 12 outs, but we're on the draw. Yeah, I don't love this hand. Alright, this is pretty good. 
I have to get rid of two, so sadly can't keep Veil of Summer. Also gets a little bit worse on the draw when we can't stop a turn one discard spell. And then, yeah, I guess Charger goes, and then Scamp can actually present lethal on turn two. However unlikely. I guess turn one forests. I don't hate my uh, chances. So play Scamp, and then next turn go for it, so red-white. Could play around Blood Moon here by fetching planes and then playing Sigarda's aid, but then I won't be able to attack with Scamp next turn since this one does not gain haste. But yeah, if they are not playing Companion, turn one Halfling with a Forest, they could definitely drop down Blood Moon on two, and then if I can't play Sigarda's aid, I can't really combo off. So I'll play it safe. And hopefully we don't get punished for kind of playing it cautiously here. Playing Sigardos 8 first also plays around a burn spell a bit better. And yeah, points on the stone rain deck. Problem now is if I play Scamp I can't play Hammer, but uh, yeah, it's not like we have a ton of options here. Could also play Wooded Foothills and Pass to play around another stone rain since we could just fetch in response and then next turn play both Scamp and Hammer in the same turn. Plays around Stomp from Bonecrusher, plays around Lightning Bolt. Kinda like that actually. And at this point we don't care about Blood Moon anymore. Alright, there's Blood Moon. No real reason to fetch since I don't have Forest anyway. Saves us one damage. And now we'll have to be pretty careful about timing this Colossus Hammer. I guess now that our opponent stepped out, I just cast it now. So they can't respond with a burn spell. And now this is a must answer scamp, and we're about to give it trample. So yeah, all things considered. This seems to have worked out. Possible they would have been able to play turn 2 Blood Moon, so if I didn't play Sigarda's 8 on 1, that could have backfired. And we can even play Shadow Spear at instant speed here for the surprise trample. So trample for 10, and then sacrifice camp for another 12 damage. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing an equipment to go with Sigarda's aid and outfitter. So I think this is a mulligan. Once again, no equipment. We're just kind of a mediocre aggro deck. So I'll go to 5. Alright, we've got creatures, we've got fighter class to get equipment. Actually no red mana either, so... Yeah, I hate to do it, but I think we have to go to 4 now. And this is probably our best hand so far. So, can I afford to keep Veil of Summer? Opponent's not playing any companion. If they had Lurus, I would maybe be tempted to keep, but... In the dark, I think uh, we get rid of it. One belt can go. And then probably have to get rid of a land, since we're more likely to draw one. And then maybe get rid of Vantage so I can get Stomping Ground, which plays Charger and Belt. And we've got more white sources than green sources we can draw. So yeah, not a promising start here, but uh, at least we've got a game plan. Snow-covered forests plus Kami, so our opponent on the Titan ramp deck. And yeah, without any form of evasion, our opponent can just chum block Charger all day long. 
But uh, here at least we've got Belt on 2 and Resolute Strike on 3. Blast Zone can also blow up our Fireblade Charger. So that's no good. Maybe should have played Windswept Heath to be able to uh, sacrifice Canyon and draw. Although we might be working our way up towards Lorus instead. So if they have Castle Garenbrig, they could already cast a Primeval Titan, or they might have Natural Order to get there instead. If our opponent doesn't blow up Blast soon, then I could potentially top deck Thud for the win. Alright, there's Natural Order. So yeah, hopefully we draw Thud. Opponent might gain two with Fountain, which would put them out of range. Yeah, Thud could still get there. So we've got a four outer here. We may as well fetch to thin out the deck. And that's a thud, wow. That's lucky, no point in attacking first. Well, on a mold to four here. Opponent had all the tools they really needed to survive, but they probably didn't have thud on their radar. Awesome. And we get to rank up to diamond as well here. Well, gotta believe in the heart of the card sometimes. And this was definitely one of those moments. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. And if this is a burn deck, then Shadow Spear is going to be pretty important. We've got Outfitter to go with Belt, so certainly a keepable hand. If our opponent's packing a ton of removal, this could be a bit more difficult. For now, Channeler could also be a burn deck or could be the Underworld Breach combo. So turn one, could play a 2-2 Nakadal, which at least survives Bowmasters. But it's not like I can Resolute Strike a Colossus Hammer next turn necessarily. So in that case I'm probably still better off going Outfitter, turn two belts, and then take it from there. Even though Outfitter dies to Bowmasters and Nakadal does not. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we have Resolute Strike in hand makes it less important for me to uh, play the Outfitter early. So maybe it's still worth it to Nakadal, so a Bowmasters is not as much of a setback. And we'll soon find out whether we're dealing with a burn deck or not. Swiss Spear, alright, so our opponent is on burn. And they've got a burn spell for one Nakadal. So, sequencing. I want to avoid exposing Outfitter to another removal spell for as long as it's my only creature. So instead I can play Belts, and then next turn Outfitter immediately equip the Belts, and then as soon as we get Shadow Spear online we're good to go. So I can fetch for my basic planes to save myself a bit of damage. Play the belt and pass. With Resolute Strike we can potentially protect Outfitter from a instant speed burn spell by equipping belt at instant speed. But we could also just be dead here if our opponent has two more burn spells. The light of the stage goes digging. Finds a Searing Blood. We're at four. Can play Copper Line Gorge. So the Outfitter is actually not a warrior, so it's not like we can Resolute Strike to equip something at instant speed for free here. 
Otherwise, we could maybe try and do something tricky where we equip Shadow Spear to have a lifelink in the opponent's turn while surviving the Searing Blood dealing three. But uh, that's not going to work, so I think we just have to equip the belts, hope to dodge a burn spell for a turn, and then next turn connect with a huge lifelinker, which should uh, win us the game. So if they have any direct damage or another haste creature were dead. Which admittedly is most of their deck. Bobble, that's fine. They could still draw into a burn spell and cast it before I get to connect with my lifelinker. So once that last card opponent attacks, we got a block. And it was a Bowmasters. Alright, GG's. One damage making the difference here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we're missing a way to equip this Colossus Hammer on the cheap. So sadly, this is a mulligan. This we could keep. It's all in on this turn one Fireblade Charger surviving, which is not a given. But, uh, We'll give it a shot. Could also wait, since of course Charger does gain haste. And then for now just play the Colossus Hammer. If they have a discard spell, I may regret it, since then they take Charger. But uh, maybe in general, they're more likely to keep up a removal spell or kill Charger if we played on turn one. Turn 1 Dark Ritual, is turn 1 Necro incoming? Looks like it. Alright, so we could win on turn 2 if our opponent takes a little bit too much damage. So next turn we'll be hitting for 13. And yep, yeah, opponent's at 13. Exactly. Now for opponents worth the one on the play and they get to do this and then untap with a million removal spells in hand, we can probably never win. But yeah, it's possible that if we play Charger on one, they just Fatal Push it instead. While Nakadal does not gain haste, so has to be Fireblade Charger and then get a White Source, doesn't matter which one. That's going to be Exaxes. Although once we put the opponent low enough, it's not like they can easily remove the charger without triggering its ability to deal a bunch more damage. And there we have it. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our Naya Hammer deck in action. And the deck seems pretty reasonable in the current timeless meta. Of course, Orcish Bowmasters is still going to be a bit of a nuisance since we have so many one toughness creatures, but also the fact that it provides multiple chum blockers means that we will eventually need a card like Thud or Shadow Spear to cross the finish line, especially if uh, Lurus starts getting back cards like Bowmasters over and over. It's going to be impossible for a large creature to get there by itself. So yeah, that's definitely something you'll need to keep in mind when building hammer decks in this format. But yeah, overall I've enjoyed playing the deck and there's still a lot of room to tinker with it since there's so many options in Timeless. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.